Magic in the morning, the product GB. Together with Santana, Maria, Maria. Magic in the morning, 25 minutes from 9 o'clock. Less than a handful of days till July. Where the world's a year gone. Anyways, we're not going to complain. Got some pretty daisies out there. They spell summer. We told you Mike Barrett joins us. If you don't know Mike, he and his wife own and operate, along with a fabulous crew, Mm -hmm. Barrett Insurance Agency. Mike, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, day one back from vacation. So go easy on me this morning, all right? (laughs) What you hear what just happened to me? I know. You lost your microphone, huh? (laughs) Actually, Melinda was listening. She didn't know I had my headphones on. She goes, hey, your mic just fizzled out. And Uh I said, yeah, I know. I fixed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I grabbed me some duct tape and... Uh, we're good to go. I said, yeah, I feel like MacGyver. Yeah, Anyways. Yeah, absolutely. So we got it fixed. We got it working. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's an installment Tuesdays at this time every week. It's called Good Policies. And Mike, we've learned a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, liability insurance is our subject today. Liability, by definition, I'm not going to crank out the Webster's Dictionary. But That's give all right. A, give us a definition of it. Well, liability basically is when you are the party that has caused bodily injury or property damage, and liability goes way beyond that. Uh, it goes into personal liability, professional liability. It's when something you, an action you have completed, uh, has caused harm to others. Adverse effects. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the easiest way to think of liability. And and one of the reasons why I thought of this this morning is when we were on vacation, we were at the beach uh, in Outer Banks, North Carolina. And we had a weather pattern coming in that was going to be a strong rainstorm with winds. Yeah, there was some thunder and lightning, too. And so the lifeguard patrol on their ATVs went up and down the beach and said, hey, really, you probably should consider leaving. There's going to be a pretty good wind event coming through. And uh, that's when my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, and I said, challenge accepted. And uh, so... <clears throat> So we stayed there to protect the cooler, and uh, but we had our tent up, okay? And there were tents all the way up and down the beach. And what did take long for the tent next to us to become airborne and become a, pro- a projectile. Um, luckily, it, it escaped us. It went in front of us, not through us. Um, but that's a big liability because that was somebody else's property that could have caused some, some significant bodily injury to us if it had gone just a little different, you know? Um, so that that's what really prompted my my thought this morning to talk about liability. Did you ever see the movie Sweet Home Alabama? Oh, yeah. Okay. Where they're out there trying to make those glass yeah, We things? were. Yeah. <laughs> Challenging. So, no, and, and we've, we've talked about this. It's been a couple of years since we talked about something similar to this year, but uh, like the blow-up bouncy houses that people like to have at their family get-togethers yeah, yeah. or their office parties. Yep. Same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I bring this up because people never think about the liability aspect of a homeowner policy uh, or a more importantly, people who don't have renter's insurance policy, like, oh, I don't have that much stuff, but you do have assets to protect, and you should have a renter's policy to have liability protection because that'd be in there, too. It's worldwide liability. So anything, I'm going to give you some quick examples. That's the situation with that tent. If it had hurt somebody or broken something, easily could have been a liability situation for the owner of that tent. Um, party could have gone back to them and said, look, you know, you just badly injured this person, hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical expense, it's on you. So does that become a liability? I'm going to go back to the beginning of your story. Did they become a liability because that specific example, the lifeguard said, you got to get out of here? Nope. None of that comes okay. through. None of that. No trigger for that. It's just the fact that uh, maybe a more prudent person would have put the tent down or better anchored it, knowing that it was on, on a beach that would be sub, you know, subject to wind. Ours didn't go anywhere. Uh, that's because there were three guys holding it down. Um, but we were going to take ours down if we hadn't left. So so most people took their tents down and laid them down and came back when the storm went through. Um, but there's so many examples uh, of liability that can that that really should be aware. You know, you think about the incident last night at Sugar River, uh, Sugar Ridge Campground. Um, you know, the the individual who uh, ran into that propane line is liable. All right, so there's damage there. There's going to be damage probably from the propane dealership uh, because they they are, they probably lost some of their equipment in it. Whatever other uh, damage uh, has occurred. Um, is, is really going to probably fall back onto the liability of the auto policy of the person who, and it was just an accident. And remember, if it was anything other than an accident, it would be called an on purpose. Um, so, you know, it's really going to be uh, something that will come back on that person. So now I've given you a homeowner example. Think about this. You're riding your bike. You're not paying attention. You run into a parked car. 
boom, that's a liability exposure for you. You've now damaged somebody else's property with your body and your bike. Uh, you're going to be held liable for the repair of that damage. Um, if you're a business and somebody gets sick off your food at the restaurant or slips and falls in your driveway um, during the winter months, or not even the winter months, maybe there was a trip hazard that you didn't ta- you failed to take care of. These are all things where people could come back at you, and you're going to have a liability exposure in many cases. You know, everybody has that one uncle, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll say Uncle John just for the heck of it, okay? Oh, sure. So Uncle John comes over to the house for the family reunion. It's been going on for decades. Uncle John gets on that bike uh-huh. to show off how he used to be able to do wheelies years ago. Your bike, yeah. the tire comes off. Uh-huh. He does an endo, breaks his wrist, yeah. liability. Could very well be a liability. Certainly a medical payments to others, piece of coverage that be on whoever owns the property that you're on. Um, so, you know, the list can go on and on. Uh, the litigious society that we're in, I could I could be here for days giving you the examples of why liability is so so important to have, whether you're just a regular homeowner, uh, renter, have an automobile, and we're talking appropriate limits too. You don't want to be undershooting the coverage. You don't want state minimum for liability for for your auto. You don't want to go with the lowest available liability for your home, uh, for the business. You know, I say if you're a business owner, the lowest you should ever even think of going is a million. Um, for liability protection because, you know, deep pockets need to be protected. Uh, so make sure you are are taking some thought and, and, and it's always something that you think will never happen to you. And I think the same way. Um, but I also know that things do happen. I see it all the time. So, so don't underestimate the power and the necessity of having proper liability protection. And a footnote to business owners out there, when people think you have a deep wallet... Uh-huh. They'll, They'll tend to find a liability. Yes. And one other thing, too, if you are a business, especially, or even a homeowner, think about thir- there's exclusions for liability. If you start dipping your toes into the waters of things that aren't normal, like doing Airbnb or something at your home and not talking to your insurance carrier or deciding to deliver food with your vehicle, didn't advise with your insurance carrier, there's going to be some liability situations that could be excluded and leave you exposed. So think about that, too. Just some, some little tidbits with that this morning. Well, like you said, you could go on about it all day long. But we don't have that time. No, so. and it's my first day back, and I think I'm pretty. T- I'm gonna go home and take a nap. Well, now. you were on the ball because uh, I was gonna mention the incident at Sugar Ridge Campground, and you were all over it. So you're fine. You're uh, good I'm to right. go to the office. All right. Well, I'm still gonna complete my coffee though. Uh, yeah. Not. Well, I hope right. so. Yeah. Tell folks how to get in touch with you. Uh, give us a call seven four eight five two two four. You can find us on Portland Street in St. Johnsbury online, thebarrettagency.com, Google, Facebook, and YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for Barrett Insurance Agency. And of course, join Magic Tuesday mornings at eight thirty-five. Yes, I'm gonna sir. race you to the coffee refiller. Hey, now. <laughs> Music from BTS.